When we first get a model in, it's usually at real world scale. So we need to first scale it down. And what happens when you do that is fine elements like the glazing and the beams will be too small for the 3D printers to pick up. So what we then do is we take our, our 3D file preparation software and we go through and we, we interrogate the model. And from that, we'll pick out those fine elements and subtly thicken them up. Um, what that does is it allows us to uh, increase the structural stability and reduce the risk of any breakages. Normally there are about four types of errors that we find. Um, those are holes, gaps, near bad edges and inverted surfaces. Now holes being physical holes in the geometry, gaps being um, their actual holes in the model itself. So someone might have lift a panel or a piece of glazing out which we need to then patch up. Um, near bad edges are basically where you've got surfaces that are joining, they're butted together but they're not actually welded. So that will create an error in itself. And then you've got uh, inverted surfaces which are basically where the model is flipped inside out. We do have a series of uh, diagnostics which can detect where these errors are occurring. Um, for a certain amount of it, we can get away with using automated fixes, um, but it really takes a keen eye to go in and to detect these different error patterns, because with every model you get, you'll have a, a different ratio of these errors going on, depending on how good you know, the model is, how well it's been put together. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's bad. And what we need to do is use a different combination of fixing processes manual fixing processes to go through and tackle those problems. The hollowing function is quite good because what it allows us to do is take a, a costly solid object and to be able to hollow it out, give it a wall thickness to help save on cost. Now what we need to do in order for that to work is we need to create a hole for the material to come out. So what we'll do with a context tile model, we will create a hole underneath um, same for removable plugs, there'll be a hole somewhere on the model so that we can actually extract the material that's not being used. Depending on the model requirements, we can build in specific features to extend its use. So, for example, the context model, we can make removable plugs which the client can then have new revisions put in depending on how, you know, how the design changes. Um, we can also build in quite complex and removable parts, say for a construction model, we can show several uh, construction phases, building from you know, the initial groundwork right through to the facades being put on. So depending on what's going on, we can find a solution to meet the client's needs.